The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 873 7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hey, good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the December 9th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hope you had a great weekend. Let's make sure we have a great day. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that a life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Send me an email, but do it early, please. Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the indices in the green, with the exception of the spot volatile index, which is up 10.28% uh, so far today. It's trading out at 1503. It is above the 50 day exponential moving average. That is never a good scene for the equity markets out here. You've got the Dow off 68 points, a quarter of a percent. Not a big deal. The SP down one tenth of a percent. Charts not coming through correctly. I'm not sure what to tell you. It's uh, the way we've done it all the time out here. Try to repost this again. Not much that I can do there. Let's try this here. Here we go. We got that. Start sharing. There we go. Hopefully this will work for you guys out there. So uh, we've got the uh, NDX is up by one tenth of percent. Russell down by it's basically almost it is flat out there. The semis are up two points. So not a lot of movement, but we're still going to go uh, look into the uh, details out here. Nope. Chart not coming through, man. To, not, <clears throat> not sure what to tell you. Um, well, folks, for this next five minutes, I guess you won't see my charts. I don't know what you can see then. I guess we can turn on my face, although that's that's that that five minutes will will have you turn off. Um, you can see my face. You can't see my face. No charts. Uh, let's try this again because we don't want to do that. That's so strange. No. Uh, okay. Well, uh, sorry, folks. Um, there's some technical difficulties. We'll try to. Uh, a chart should be up, but uh, in any event, let me just talk about the uh, markets with you. I'll try to visually describe what it is that we're looking at out here, and then we'll try to uh, get things uh, fixed. So, the first chart that I would put, ah, boy, what a difficult time doing that. FaceTime. Yeah, I can FaceTime. All right, I'll give you some. I'll give you some FaceTime, Jaster. Hey, you know what? Since 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 I uh, since. You and I are having the conversation here. That's good. Why don't we just go take a look at the TAS market profiles? Let's get that out of the uh, out of the uh, zone here. And so here's what you need to know with regard to TAS market profiles. Last week on Friday, we were taking a look at the uh, daily time frames and the new profiles that we're forming. Those are in place right now. The Dow itself actually has formed a new daily profile. The top of its box is 28,197. It's also formed a new weekly profile, the top of which is 28,197. If you're wondering where there's strong resistance inside the Dow, Dow Equity Futures contract, it's at 28,197. You can't see it on my screen. I wish you could uh, if you did, but you just have to trust me on that. So why, write down on your pad of paper, 28,197. Now, where's the key level of support for the Dow? I'm glad you asked that question. It's actually at the bottom of its daily box. It's a bullish structured daily profile, and that bottom's at 27,931. 
What have we traded down to today? 27,936. So a real key level out here with regard to the direction of the markets, let's say the uh, Dow out here, would be the uh, bottom of that daily profile, 27,931. Now, not that much further below is the center of its bearish structured weekly profile. And that's at 27,875. So any close below 28,75, well, that could set up a, a move down to the uh, 27,231 area. That's the uh, Dow profiles. The NQ, which has been... I can't say it's been the strongest. The reason why I won't say it's the strongest is because Russell 2000 actually took out its prior highs out there, where the ES Mini, the NQ, and the YM did not do that. So the Russell's actually been fairly strong. Now, the Russell is trading below the top of its daily profile. It never closed above the top of that profile. That level is 1636 and a bit of change out there. So just trading sideways. But the NQ has formed a new daily, a new weekly profile, Jay, or it's trying to. We really won't know until next Monday. Maybe we'll have a better feel by Friday. But right now, we do have some new figures out here. And those new figures, the top of the weekly profile is 83.93. The bottom of that profile is 8264. So there is your range out here. What we're watching is that 8393 level. Inside the ES Mini, we don't have any new data. The old data is 3158 up at the top and 3097 down at the uh, bottom of the uh, box. Now, the next thing that I would typically turn to, I see we're still seeing your desktop screen with your face in a small insert. Well, uh, okay. Well, that can't be too bad. The question is, can you see my, are you, are you folks seeing my black background charts that show you the TAS market profiles? Because if you are, man, then we're, then we're in great shape. And you get to look at my ugly mug, you know, but in a small little square, but, but at least you get to see the charts. So are we seeing the charts out there? And I don't know the answer to that, but I'm hoping no charts at all. And I'm not sending the wrong monitor, folks. I'm sending the only monitor that is out there <clears throat> with black background. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Well, we got another minute to uh, kill. We see your desktop with lots of white charts. Well, okay. We can do, I mean, so if you can see lots of white charts, let's take a look at the ES Mini. So now do you, uh, the problem is I can't see the, uh, I can't see the, uh, I can't see the den stuff. So I don't know if that's it. Is that it? Was that it? No, that wasn't it. Okay. So, oh, you're seeing my face. So you're looking at that screen. Well, all right, let's do this here. I apologize for this, folks, but uh, it really would be so much easier, obviously, for you to be able to see the correct screen out there. So let's try doing this. You're saying that's the wrong one. Huh. huh. How strange is that? How about this? What do you get to? What do you? Yes, that's the one. Oh, man. No, I don't know what the heck you're seeing. Are you seeing my black charts now? Now we got it. Oh. Ah, you got to love it. Hey, I told you, uh, my name is Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes. We will persevere through this. Anyways, Lorna, thank you. Sorry about the uh, first uh, five, eight minutes out there. But but here are your daily profiles. So let's just daily and weekly profiles out. Here's the, char the charts that we were taking a look at. We'll see if I can get my uh, mouse back here. That would be nice. Um, but uh, it's the black background charts. You can see the uh, dialog boxes in the uh, bottom right out there. And that's going to give your TAS market profiles out there. So we get from, when we get back from this break, hey, things are moving along just hunky-dory out here. Of course, I'd love to get a call from you. 877-927-6648. Be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, sorry for that uh, initial segment there without the uh, screens uh, properly being set up, but we're all good now. So uh, and speaking of all good now, we're going to go out to Palm Harbor and speak with Jim. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Steve. How are you doing? Very good. Thanks uh, very much for asking. And uh, the ticker we're going to take a look at. Ticker symbols WMT, folks. That is Walmart that Jim is calling in to discuss. Uh, and uh, Walmart right now trading in between its profile levels for both the daily and the weekly time frame. Jim, how can I help you out? Um, well, I'm not in the stock. I was just uh, wondering if it was going to hold up or fall back to like uh, the gap that uh, was on. Let me see what date that gap In the 108 ish area, 110, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. here's what you know, and I guess to, 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 to answer that question, um, it's really about finding and identifying support and resistance. So uh, as we were initially going to you, I had mentioned that the uh, daily and weekly timeframes, that price was trading with inside its uh, range of support and resistance. So the smaller range right now is a daily timeframe chart. That's the left-hand panel, and it's a bullish structured profile. It's been around for several weeks now, the bottom of which is 117 13. The center line, which is very close to that, is at 117.43. And the top, which is resistance, is 119.85. So it just continues to trade sideways. If this is going to get back into that gap area, and, and what Jim is referring to is uh, back here, looks like the trading day of August 15th, there was a nice big gap to the upside, the bottom, which is 110.16. And Jim's wondering, will price pull all the way back into that? breakout area. And Jim, the only way that's going to happen is you'll need to see this bullish structure daily profile fail. And that would be a close below 117.13. Now, if you did get that, and assuming the same profiles are in place out there, the next level of support from a profile perspective would be 114.93. And price could find support there, which is before your 110-ish uh, area where that uh, gap is. So I don't have anything here inside the charts that we're looking at. And I haven't pulled up my white background charts. We really don't need to at this stage because this really helps us to understand uh, really your, your query, which is, you know, we'll get back into that gap. 
And right now we know it's trading between support and resistance and support will have to fail. Does that help out? Oh yeah, it does. I just, I have, like I said, I'm not in it. I was just wondering, you know, about a good entry point and I thought, well, probably the gap <laughs> would be the best, but I didn't I, know if I, it would potentially yeah. get down to that. Could could be, you know. There's there's this other possibility that's going on inside the markets itself, and and actually, uh, Walmart is is really a perfect example of it. It's something to really be able to watch. This is where, really knowing, I'm not referring to to you, Jim, but just everybody that's out there. Uh, about as far as what I'm going to say, it's really important to understand uh, the the proper makeup of a Japanese candlestick. And for example, on this monthly chart here, there are many people that would be looking at last month's candle, the month of November, and calling that a shooting star. And that would not be correct. And if you're going to use the candles associated with other patterns that are out there, you'd get schnookered because that is not a bearish reversal candle. Now, granted, price sold off from its spike high out there, but it's still not a bearish reversal signal. Whereas the top that formed back in 2007, or 2015, I take that back, the January 15, 2015 out here, perfect example of a shooting star, the rose momentum indicator on a monthly basis, and then that pull out, pull back into the, uh, it's a TD setup, nine count bottom. What I really wanted to be able to share with you is the fact that we're now in, or last month was bar number eight, price been moving higher, doing it with less relative energy. And that pullback that you're looking for, Jim, um, if it does form, we could easily see some type of bearish reversal candle. And if we were to see Walmart close below 115.03, and I know you're looking for an entry price, this could say that you've got a more serious decline underway because of the larger term, longer term monthly time frame chart inside of Walmart. So that's kind of the bigger picture. And the Dow and the components of the Dow, many of them, not all, but many of them look just like this. And it kind of makes me think, Jim, something to think about. All righty. All right. I appreciate it. You bet. You bet. Good to hear from you. Uh, I was Jim in Palm Harbor, and that is a Walmart, which right now is just simply consolidating sideways in between support and resistance. Again, 117 to 119. Jim, thanks so much for calling in. Um, no other requests. Uh, no other phone lines are open. Email lines are open. But let's go take a look at the markets. A couple of things that I had mentioned during that first segment that we can go back to. One of those was the uh, spot volatility index. So let's pull up the spot volatility index symbols out here futures contracts, if you will. And this takes us all the way out to August of 2020, if you're watching us on Tiger TV. Now, the most important thing to be looking at, you could be looking at the panel in the lower left. And then if you were doing that, you would look at its blue line, which is at 1401. That's the 50-day exponential moving average. And when price, when the spot volatility, index, that is, is trading above the 50-day exponential moving average, that indicates to Stevie and you that there's a tight liquidity in the uh, marketplace. What, what it really tells us is that uh, this is where declines and significant declines can occur out here. So it's a real key to watch that 14. Now, you don't have to trust me. I don't want you to trust me. I don't want you to believe me. I just want you to believe your eyes. That's the whole trade what you see. That means I owe Larry another dollar for utilizing that, uh, you know, because he's got that trademarked out there. But here's what it is that's really important when we take a look at the spot volatility index. In this case here, I've got the S&P 500 up there. The bottom panel is the spot volatility index and cordoned off, so to speak, in squares and rectangles out there are periods of time where the spot volatility index is either above or below its 50-day exponential moving average. The yellow areas are the ones where the spot volatility index is above its 50-day exponential moving average. And what you will see there is price tends to go sideways or lower out here, whereas when price is below the 50 day, those would be the green profiles or the green rectangles out there. Price typically moves higher to sideways. So we did have one heck of a nice rally so far back to the highs of just from back on November 29th. But now you've got that spot volatility index, which is living above the 50 day exponential moving average out there. And folks, that is a time to be cautious. But, you know, you put this together with regard to where price is trading in relationship to its support and resistance levels. And that would take you back in essence from a daily perspective back into the ES mini out here. 
here. So with the spot volatility above the 50, if it stays above the 50, we're going to see price inside the S-mini get back to the 3117 or 3097 area, the center or bottom of its profile level out there. But that is a important wild card. Just out of curiosity, I don't know what the answer to this is. Where is the advanced decline oscillator? So it is above zero out there. So <clears throat> if you're wondering why haven't things really started uh, hooting and hollering to the downside? It's because the market breadth is still in bullish configuration, which would have the advanced decline oscillator just above zero. If that thing gets back below zero, while the spot volatility is above its 50-day EMA, we're going to see at least a retracement or something even more serious than that. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. Or you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. In that subject heading, please put radio show question. Dow's off 77, S&P down 5. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. we got a couple of questions that have come in, so let's go to those. The first one coming in from Earl. Earl the Pearl writes in. He says, hey, Steve. Hey, Earl. 
Uh, he writes, uh, in the past, you said, uh-oh, uh-oh, if I said something, that's dangerous. In the past, you said the uh, market could pull back to the June 2019 low. Is that still a pullback? Is it, or maybe you're asking, is that still a possibility, um, that that could happen in this bull market and still be a bull market? So, Earl, if I let me try to answer your question the way that I'm interpreting it. Uh, first, um, you're asking, can we have a pullback into the uh, June lows and still be in a bull market? Still, um, and so my answer to that is absolutely, positively, yes. So, I, I mean, I'd, I'd ask a question like this to everybody that's listening in out there. Now, I, it, there's several answers to this, but what's the difference between a 10% pullback and a 20% pullback. Yes, one is 100% more than the other, okay, but as per, in percentage wise. So you, you got me there. But what's the difference? The difference is we call one a correction, whoever the we is, whoever created this, and the other is we call the other a bear market. Right. So the idea is that if you get a correction that's more than 20%, now you've entered bear market territory. My contention is I don't have the time to, to do that right now. We have done it in the past um, that this bull market run and there's an actual gap that is still open back there back in 1974. And that's when this bull market, um, this leg of the bull market that we're in took off. I know there's a lot of people that want to celebrate the 10 year anniversary or something like that out there. <laughs> Uh, you know, they look at charts differently than Stevie does. On average, you get a 10% correction at least once a year. And about every three to five years, you get corrections that are 20% or more. Now, you and I, those of us that have grown up in the Fibonacci world, would realize that a retracement from low to high out there of 61% would be normal. Many people will just simply buy those retracements out there. So, yeah, it's it's all about a definition, Earl, of a uh, bull market. You can have bear market corrections in a bull market. Um, so, you know, I, I may be using vernacular different than you use it, but I'm sharing with you my interpretation uh, of it. Now, can the market pull back into the uh, June area? In the Dow, the June area, as an example, would take us uh, right into the uh, time frame, uh, or, or uh, uh, obviously till June, but if we're taking a look at the horizontal monthly horizontal trading ranges for the Dow. And right now, uh, Earl, let's just use the information that we've got. The uh, Dow uh, cash indice trading out at about 27,939 and change out there, still below the November low, which is 28,174. So, Earl, I'll answer kind of uh, go beyond your question out here. If I see the uh, Dow trading above 28,174, then uh, with regard to going lower, I'm not really focused on the going lower. I would say to you that instead the Dow is likely to head up to 29,036, maybe even 30,720. 29,036, that general area is the uh, top of its next monthly horizontal trading range. We are in the favorable seasonal cycle, but I need to see price move above the top of February. Why does Stevie need to see that? Why do you need to see that? Well, you need to see that because as we take a look at the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract, well, it's got two, really three topping patterns out here. You've got wave number seven, that's letter G. You've got a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top, that's number two. Uh, you've got an A to B equals C to sell the D point out there with the uh, bearish engulfing candle. And price has just simply bounced back to its resistance level of Stevie's green line out there. We're actually trading below that. Stevie's green line is about 28.016 as we speak right now. So you've got a important or significant topping pattern in play right now. Now you may ask yourself, uh, I'll just get rid of the A to B equals CD pattern. Is that important out here? Well, if I just pull this back just a tad, Earl, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, and you tell me these roads momentum indicator signals here. This is a Dow equity futures contract. Actually, if I can find the Dow chart out here, what would I have to do to do that? I've got to change. Let me give me a moment here to see if I can just change this over here because I want to stay with the Dow versus the equity futures contract just for the moment if I can, which I can because I'm controlling the show. But um, even though I'm controlling the show, where is it? Is it right here? Give me a second to try to locate this. Yeah, I think here it is. Um, here is uh, 
here's the Dow, the cash indices. And what you're going to see out here, these arrows are showing you, and this is 2019, you're going to see the Rhodes Momentum Indicator tops and bottoms. Now, you really need to know how to use this pattern. I'd love to teach you. If you become a subscriber, it happens to be on your members page out there um, in the archive section. So great pattern to work and look at how it's identified the uh, tops and bottoms inside the Dow cash indice. And what we have going on right now, right, is a top that had formed inside the uh, Dow using this pattern out here. So um, what I use for that line of demarcation now is we trade over this pattern. Uh, we're in that favorable seasonal cycle. We would then see the Dow move on up to 29036. And I've developed a little bit of a presentation out there. Uh, that I will uh, do uh, in the uh, segment that uh, with Tom today at about 3.15 or so, Earl. So I'd suggest that uh, if you have the opportunity to watch the archive, um, that uh, listen back in on that, because on that, what I will share with you is the, the downside potential that we're looking at. And the downside potential, going back to your question, now everything has to come about at the right time here, suggests that the downside, the June lows, Mm, probably lower than that. But let's just deal with this one step at a time, one pattern at a time. And right now, the pattern that is in play out here is topping signals. I'll go back to those equity futures contracts here. Uh, let me just switch back to uh, that. And, and each of them, and many of the uh, cash indices have topping patterns. If not just the simple uh, sell the D point of the A to B equals CD pattern here inside the NQ, you've got that. You've got a uh, you've got a, a seventh wave move letter G out there. And here in the NQ, which has been very strong, where is it finding resistance? Stevie's green line. That's priced at 84.14. We're trading at 83.91 out there. So. I'd say that right now, today, the important thing is the market breadth inside that New York Stock Exchange. If that New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator line uh, starts trading below uh, zero out there, and right now it's above, if it starts trading below zero combined with the spot volatilities above the 50-day exponential moving average, well, that is ripe for a uh, decline. And maybe the decline is nothing more than completing an A to B equals CD to the downside inside the Dow. I'll just simply hear, since I've got it, that Dow equity futures contract would give you price projections. Well, let's go ahead and put them in. Uh, darn, that didn't work. Let me do this again. Sorry about that, folks. My, uh, my finger on my mouse got a little too itchy there. Uh, so your 1 to 1 A to B equals CD as we expand this out here would take you down into the uh, 27, 162, 26, 9, 21. And what I would say would be at least the 26, 615 area. That would be the more likely target if, in fact, we did see an A to B equals CD to the downside and a uh, clear close below 27,337. That's another that's a key level of support out there. So Earl the Pearl, I hope that helps answer uh, my questions to you as best as can be. I see things differently, I suppose. And for me, it's just simply knowing that a uh, bear market is nothing more than a little bit of a larger correction. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Of course, one that you'd like to avoid at all possibility. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's down 66, S&P 4, NDX off about uh, six points. So no real significant uh, changes uh, since we came on air. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from LB. LB writes in and says, uh, hey, Steve, uh, I bought into WRTC a while back. Uh, it's had a great run. Can you give me uh, your short and long-term thoughts on the SPOC? So let's go take a look at now. This is trading above, uh, LB, this is trading above the daily and the weekly profiles. There are no monthly profiles. This looks like this is an IPO from back in June of last year. So still not enough data to give us any kind of monthly signal. So trading above resistance, that's a beautiful thing. But let's use Stevie's other tools and uh, see what we can see out here. Let's begin by looking at the daily. Uh, Lee, I think we'll take a look at the daily and assume that's our short-term signal out here. Now, the way that one of the patterns that can form at tops and bottoms uh, would be that Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. And when this finally did bottom back here on November 7th, it was that Rhodes Momentum Indicator. So it's when price is pushing itself, in this case here, down lower, but without the energy behind it. And energy is really, really important out here. And if we take a look at this, form that nice bullish uh, reversal candle on November the 8th. And this thing has continued to move higher. Now, it's trading out at about 584. And so support levels on this. And one of the things that you really like about this LB is right here, the trading day, believe it or not, of November 21st was really a key day for you, at least utilizing Stevie's tools. That was the day that the oscillator on change line changed from red to green. And at the exact same time that that was happening, price was testing that line. It bounced off of it. That was a bullish signal for you. And that has resulted uh, in that. There's an A to B equals CD. This could be a a Gartley cell pattern that is forming. The A to B equals CD that I would draw on this looks like this. Whoops, well, it's close to that. Uh, there we go. It's really more like this. You can see you're in the stage here with the 1.618 area at 630. Uh, but you've got another resistance level at 719. A uh, short of some type of bearish reversal candle forming LB, I would stay with this trade. 719 looks to be the target. Okay, so that's the daily time frame. But let's go look at the weekly and see what we've got here. Looks like somebody in the den has posted something about wrap technology. My den screen is very small, folks, so I can't 
see or follow all the conversations, uh, just, uh, just a few lines of it out here. But if we do take a look at the weekly time frame chart, well, this tells us the picture of support and resistance for you. Now, support is $3 on a weekly basis. Support, uh, $3 based upon that TD9 setup. And it was price was pulling down from that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom was doing it right above the $3 level. That's actually nice and bullish out there. Price forms a bottom above support. Beautiful thing. Now what price is doing for you is moving up to resistance. So on the weekly base, your resistance level is six and a quarter, which you got very close to uh, last week. The high was last week was, uh, see if I can find it here real quickly, uh, 608 versus six and a quarter. So you're up towards some resistance now. Um, I would just simply use stops. Um, I don't know if this is a trade for you. It's an investment. Um, but I would just simply at least keep some stop in place. Now, the average true range on this instrument is 46 cents. Uh, in theory, there's always a difference between theory and reality. But in theory, price shouldn't uh, pull back uh, beyond uh, the 1.618 multiplication of that average true range. Well, I know I had to think about that for a while. How was I going to say that? But basically, I'm asking you to multiply 46 cents times 1.618. And, you know, you put your stop uh, below the close. Let's say the close of today. Below that, if that stop is okay with you uh, from your trading standpoint, then everything is good. Um, and if it's not, well, then you've got something else to consider out here. But I don't see anything bearish just yet. But we do know that price had made its way up to resistance, an important key resistance level. So, LB, I hope that helps you out with the uh, trade, and best of luck there. Let me know if you need anything else. Dan writes in, and Dan is saying, hey, Steve, with one biotech or another going bonkers every day, can you please take a look at HEPA? Uh, not Peppa Pig, but HEPA, H-E-P-A, and not a HEPA filter out there, uh, but the ticker symbol H-E-P-A, which is Hepion Pharmaceuticals. And let's finish reading the question out here, which I'm trading on the long side. If there's time, I'd also appreciate a read on an, another ticker symbol out here. So let's just take a look at uh, Hepion Pharmaceuticals. I believe we'll have enough time. And a price right now, what it did here today is it came back and it tested a level of support, old resistance, that appears to be new support. And that was the top of its daily profile. Formed just a few days ago out there, Dan, the man, Levitan, and that's at $5.26 out there. So as long as price stays above that, uh, that's a beautiful thing. On the weekly, uh, Hepion Pharmaceuticals has the top of its profile at 445. So uh, we've had two weeks of closes above that last week and the week before. So that looks pretty good out here. Um, you got to be careful with this. Uh, well, I don't know. This looks this. I don't I, the, the volume on this is so sporadic. And when I say sporadic, folks, what I'm referring to is, for example, the day of November 12th, 86,000 shares uh, versus, let's say, the uh, day of uh, November 21st, 27 million shares out there. Jeez, you're talking about bonkers. Uh, let me just take a quick peek out here, see what else we see on Stevie's shorter term or the daily chart out there. I don't see anything. Don't see anything more than uh, uh, that. So your question was, uh, when I take a look at it, I don't see anything bearish here. And today is uh, rejecting a level, let's call it level one area of support. Again, the daily top of that box out there. Now, if price got below 526, you'd be looking at 475, maybe even move down to 371 out there. But that seems to be all I've really got for you at this stage of the game. When we take a look at Peppa Pig or HEPA, H-E-P-A, HEPA and Pharmaceuticals. Let's go take a look at the other uh, requested symbol out here, A-R-W-R, R war out there. Let's go see what this is. Now, uh, this trade in the 89 has got a different... Uh, different volume, A -W -A -R -W -R. I want to get that on my other chart if I can, A-W-R. Geez, if I could just learn how to type, A-R-W-R. -R. It's actually, I cannot, uh, as they say, chew gum and walk at the uh, same time. It's terrible, isn't it? Hey, anybody else got that problem out there? You can't chew gum and walk at the same time? Eh, yeah, well, in any event, if we do take a look at Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals, this thing has been a rocket ship out there. Did this thing identify a nice bottoming signal back there with that key reversal session? It, it was a TD setup nine count bottom. That happened, I was looking at that uh, bar on uh, October the uh, 1st out there. Man, that was a, a nice move. Let's just do a quick wave count off of the uh, low of that uh, bar out there. Gets to wave number seven. 
forms a bearish reversal candle. Right now, price just dancing along Stevie's oscillator and change line. You got some resistance up at the uh, up at these highs out here, that bearish engulfing candle. So your resistance level is going to be the high. This is again the daily bar. So you're looking at that high of November 30th, trying to get the uh, price for you here. That high is. 73.72. So it's bullish. You've got here's the struggle. It's very much looks like some of the uh, daily equity futures contracts. We've got topping signals. So you know you've got resistance. In this case here, you identified this with wave number seven. And then bottoming or support level, which is held. Yes, price is trading inside its bearish structure daily profile, but price is still dancing along Stevie's green line. This thing here remains uh, bullish. But you're in between support and resistance on this out there, Dan. So uh, that's what I see. And you've got a, a weekly TD setup nine count pattern. So you've got a topping signal out here. So just be careful. Uh, again, the uh, use some stops average true range over the last 10 days on this instrument, $5.32. We get back from this break. We're going to go answer a question that was posted in the den about uh, the S&P 500 moving higher into about 31.54. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, question out there inside the Tigers' den, we'll try to cover this here during this two-minute wrap, comes from uh, John. John writes in and says, uh, what do you think? Is the S&P forming an important top in the 3154 level? And he's referring to the uh, highs of uh, November out there. Um, as time approaches uh, January 18th, uh, Marty Armstrong's uh, economic confidence model uh, date out there. And uh, so uh, it's possible, uh, John, now take a look at the S&P 500. Here's what I would suggest. Um, if we see the S&P uh, start trading above 3154.26, that is the high in November, then what I believe will happen is we'll see the S&P 500 continue to move higher through the end of the year. Could be through the end of the year, could be through uh, the early part of January, uh, could be through that uh, ECM date that you're referring to. Um, so, but the key is going to be, you know, is price able to close above those or trade above those November highs out there? If we take a look at all four cash indices, you'll see that um, with the exception of the Russell 2000, which did tick above that on Friday. It's trading below that right now. But if we see all four of these indices trading above their November highs, John, my anticipation or expectation is that we will see price continue to move higher through the end of the year out there. However, that's a potential problem. The potential problem is, and we just we took a look at it briefly out there, which was the uh, which was the Dow's Rhodes Momentum Indicator topping signal. So if price is able to take that out, it should move higher. But here's the issue: right now, if we were to go take a look at the health of the Dow from a long-term standpoint, and this was uh, touched on by Jim and myself out here when we took a look at Walmart. Look at that right-hand column. M stands for monthly. RMI, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator pattern, and look at all of the topping patterns, either confirmed or signals out there. Let's not worry about that. 16, more than half, more than 50%. And so you were asking about a cycle inversion, John. Here is your answer right here. There are problems in River City and the Dow, but we need to see where is it that the Dow trades between now and let's say the end of January. If we see moves above 3154, the market should continue moving higher. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 4, and I'll be back with you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magnificent, marvelous Monday.